talking about skiing is just being up in the mountains. That's it. And the whole atmosphere. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, Lauren, it's very nice to have a chance to see you again, and especially to welcome you to Dallas because uh, this is my home. So. Well, good. It's beautiful. I will. I mean, I haven't seen a whole lot because I got in last night, but it's the biggest sky I've ever seen uh, next to Africa. And no. you are a well-traveled lady. I know that. Yeah, I'm on my 14th trip to Africa. But it's just the sky is like that. And, it, and w for me, <sighs> it just sort of relaxes me immediately. You know, it's nice. I like a little room, especially coming from New York where you see a little tiny piece at a time, sliver of sky. What is it about Africa? What do you do for 14 trips? What do you do? <laughs> I uh, camp out. I hang out. I just, um, it's just fun. I usually, by now, I've been there so many times that I have friends who are research scientists and who are white Africans that are like third generation, ex-English colonialists or something. And, uh, you know, they sent off to Cambridge or Oxford and studied something and they loved Africa so much that they just came back as soon as they could and they live out in the bush and have the camps in the bush and one's like the elephant man and another one's the biomass man and another one's uh, you know the giraffe man and everybody's got a different expertise but basically it's an excuse for all of them just live in the bush so we just and they use planes over there they probably do that in Texas they use small planes like like hot rods and they just zoom from camp to camp even though it may cross countries without checking in <laughs> or <laughs> whatever. Uh, you know, it's just, it's fun. Have you had any frightening experiences down there? Oh, millions. That's part of the reason you go. It's, uh, it's, uh, you do that a lot. At the ad spirit yeah. of adventure. Let's see, I was once almost killed by a crocodile. I was almost run over by a uh, rhino, big rhino. Um, the time before last, uh, I was, I, I think I had too much to drink one night. <laughs> and I went out uh, crawling on the ground after a very big bull elephant that had come into camp, which was kind of dumb probably. But the guy who was taking me out, I think he was making a pass at me, this guy was, uh, he'd grown up there, so I, and he was 35. I figured if he was still alive, he must know what he's doing, right? So we're crawling along after this, and we're downwind of this, um, really wrong wind. The guy can't smell us, this elephant can't smell us. And, uh, we get down, he, he, he finally notices us, we're on the ground, he makes a mock, mock charge. My friend warns me, he says, okay, he's going to make a, a, a fake charge, just, you know, stay there on the ground. So the elephant, you know, they put their ears forward and they have enormous ears. And he charged us and put his trunk up, and when it, it's bad enough standing looking at an African elephant, it's much taller than the ceiling, you know, they stand maybe 13, 14 feet, the shoulder, I guess. Uh, and uh, then he backed off, and all of a sudden I heard this, we started to crawl away, and all of a sudden I heard this guy's voice go up about two octaves, <laughs> and that's when I knew we were in trouble. He started squeaking, literally squeaking. And he said, roll over, he's going to charge again. And we just hit the dirt. I saw this guy, and he hit the dirt, and he cur curled up. And unfortunately, he was ahead of me, and I was in, I was in the front, and, and I just laid there, and I remember looking up, and this silhouette was cut out of the stars. It was quite beautiful. I wasn't afraid at all. What always happens is, is you're not afraid. It's just you're in this sort of shock where you, you don't feel much of anything. You see stuff, but you don't feel anything. And I saw this gigantic, enormous silhouette, and I was actually jumping up and down. I mean, my body, I was in a fetal position. My body was curling up and down on the ground, jumping up and down the ground because of the weight of this guy running, this elephant running at us. And uh, then all of a sudden I felt, and I thought, I didn't even think about it. You don't even think about being a goner. You, you know you're gone. And right about a foot from my head, he just, I, f I just heard this a sort of a skid. I think I imagined the skid. I didn't hear it. I was suddenly covered with dirt, just this Huge spray, and then fine little dust came down over me, and I could see all these stars up there with this huge outline of these ears, this sort of ear shape, and these stars, and this little dust filtering over me. And what had happened is he had charged right up to my head, and then just stopped on a dime because they're that civilized. You know, he wasn't going to uh, squash me for no reason other than manners. 
<laughs> and we go and shoot them. I mean, it's ridiculous. That's a, just an extraordinary story. Yeah, it was a great. I had a great time. I'll never do it again. <laughs> well, I, I imagine. Let's talk about the movie now. You, this, uh, you're playing a countess mm -hmm. and uh, starring opposite Tom Selleck. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you can add him to your list of exciting <laughs> leading men. Another notch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really, do you ever stop to think about it, Lauren? All these just fantastic leading men. How fortunate can you be? Well, I could be more fortunate. I could be a fantastic leading woman. And that probably would be more fortunate. Uh, I guess I'll have to do a lot more acting. You know, I started, I didn't study until very late, and I never went on the stage until just recently. But it certainly was great knowing them, and it was a lot of them. I wasn't any good when I worked with them, you know, like Bob Redford or something, and now I'm really ashamed and embarrassed, and it's just sad because to work with a, if you're a good actor, to work with an actor who ha isn't an actor, doesn't know what they're doing, it's really painful. It's horrible. Because it, you see their fear, and you smell their fear, and it's very difficult to get around it or calm them down or, or stay in your own character. So I regret a lot of my work with these wonderful men. What about Tom Selleck now, working in this picture? What, say five years from now, what are you going to remember most about it? Uh, his sense of humor. Tom's a lot of fun. I mean, he's very much the way you see him. He's, uh, he's just uh, sort of a good old boy, and, but uh, not really a southern style. It's another style. But he likes to joke and have fun and play around. And we had a good time making it. Did you like the part you played? Oh, yes. Yes. It was my very first villainous. And uh, I got, I had very long fingernails and I had, uh, I got long cigarette holes. They let me do anything because obviously they had a very eccentric part. And I happen to know a couple of uh, German countesses. One I, I is a big hunter and I know her from Africa and I've been on hunts with her. And um, she's pretty eccentric. So I figured I knew more about this character than they did. So I got to do anything. And I had her taking coke all the time. I mean, she, she's a killer. She kills people. And I had her taking coke with her fingernails, and I had her wearing, you know, animals and dead things and feathers and veils and champagne swizzle sticks and, and having a very good time. Uh, you know, the worse she is, the more fun she has. And they gave you free reign to do whatever, huh? Yeah, I think if I had done something they didn't like, they probably would have pulled me back. But. And what was Tom's reaction to all this wild stuff? Oh, he was very supportive. He was very encouraging and supportive. He liked it. Were you always set to do this part? Because really, uh, Jane Seymour has played villainesses, and it seems like maybe, you know, they might have thought of her for that part and you for the other part, huh? I don't know. <laughs> has she played villainesses? Oh, yeah. Evil parts. Evil Lucky parts. Her. Yeah. I tell you, it's much more fun than being a good girl, I think. Because. Well, you can just go further out, you know, you can, um, I had more fun. You, it's more I, fun being bad. <laughs> Lauren, I guess you still have to go around I living, like an idiot. Li living this <laughs> title Sorry. of uh, one of the ten most beautiful women. Yeah, you still have to put up with that, do you? No, I don't. No, I think I'm retired from those pastors. Well, but you are beautiful, so you can't deny that. Well, I'm not going to fight with you about this. <laughs> I read, though, that, that you don't really have that image of yourself. No. Why no. not? Well, I guess I'm just too dirty most of the time. I mean, you know, some of my trips I go 25 days without a bath. So you really can't, because there's no water. You know, if you're, like, going across the Kalahari Desert or something, you only get a cup of water a day to wash with. That's not big bathing where I come from. So, you know, it's just, uh, I, can't, I can't spend that much time being a glamour puss. Did you enjoy it when you were modeling? Had to always look glamorous and everything? I think I probably enjoyed it more than I knew. Uh, you think you don't. You think that you, I didn't think I was involved, you know, with vanity, but uh, certainly I was. Maybe not to the extent that a lot of people were, because I did have other things that I loved and was interested in, an interior life, you know. Uh, but I think you can't help but making, earning all your money on the way you look, day after day, um, without becoming very involved in that, and vain. 
You think that's why and you... I'm ashamed of myself. Why you got into going off traveling that way, just to overcome it? No, I was raised in a swamp. You know, I had alligators and rattlesnakes in my backyard. I used to go out and catch rattlesnakes and sell them. We get a dollar a foot for the skin. I'm sorry, but... And, uh, you know, that's what I liked. That's what my idea of a good time was. To be with the animals. Well, just to be out, to be outdoors in the bush and to not know what's going to get you next. I like that. I like to have, uh, be suddenly faced with something that you can't smile at, you can't whip out a checkbook to, you can't talk your way out of it. You've just got to, whatever comes up, you've got to deal with it right then, whatever's inside you. I think that's important for us. And I think it's a hard, I don't think you get that much opportunity in modern life. Well, Lauren, I hope that there is nothing attacks you here in Dallas. In How about a couple Anatol of Texans? <laughs> yeah, I was going One to say, unless it's a rich oil man. <laughs> hey, it's fun seeing you again. Thank and you. And congratulations on your role in Lassiter. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> okay, now we have. Yeah, I know I am too, but it does make sense. Okay, all right. Then the elephant came at me like this. Oh, oh. <laughs> Let's be scary. I wouldn't trade it for the world. I'll tell you that. <laughs> but I'm glad I got away. <laughs> you got a great smile. Okay, and sound for questions. All right. What is the most terrifying thing that has happened to you on these trips to Africa? You said, uh, are, are, do any terrifying, do any scary things happen? Because that's why I said that's one yeah, of the reasons okay, I go. Yeah, okay, okay. Have you had any scary things happen to you on, during these trips? What are some of the things that have happened then? Peeing pygmies in the back of a truck. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. You have worked with such a long list of fabulous, handsome, leading men. Do you ever stop to think about that? When you think about all these fabulous men you've worked with, what comes to mind? You said something about it, and I said I could be a more fabulous actress, but you said what was yeah. you, said, you said you could be a great leading woman. Uh, Which you used to. Is it great? Yeah. Was that the word great? Because it had something, I reflected mm -hmm. your question. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, all right. Five years from now, what will you remember most about working with Tom Selleck in Lassiter? Do you like playing this countess, this evil countess? Did you pattern this countess after anyone you knew? Well, it'll cut with with your answer. It depends on how they edit it. You know that where they start, My where they start. Sees this. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, all right. Um, do you still have to carry around that title, one of the ten most beautiful women? Did you mind that really? When you were modeling, did you enjoy all that glamorous stuff? Okay, um, I believe that'll do it. Okay, thank you, Lauren. You're thank welcome. you. Where are you from? Here, you know. I'm from here. Uh, well, from I was. You grew up here? Where'd you uh, grow up? No, I grew up in the Midwest, mm -hmm. Indiana. Where'd you come here?